Hello everyone and welcome back to Mariana Mass Books. My name is Mariana and today I am here with the mid-year book freakout tag. The mid-year book freakout tag is uh, the reason why I opened up my channel. If you remember, if you have been following me <laughs> since the beginning, which is not very long, um, the mid-year book freakout tag was my first video last year and I actually opened my channel just so I could answer this tag because it's my favorite tag on booktube this year i have to be honest i thought i wasn't going to film it because you know i haven't been in the mood to read i've been in a slump my life has been a mess blah 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 all the things i've been telling you guys and so i thought i didn't have answers for the tag but then uh, i've been binging mid-year book freakout tag videos as one does and i started thinking and i realized that i do have answers for the questions and so i thought you know what i'm going to film it the first question is what is the best book you have read so far and um this year i haven't had any book that has really hit me on an emotional level you know how i get when i read books that just really let that i connect with the characters and I just you know how I get and I haven't had a book like that this year but the one that I'm going to answer is the one that I have been thinking about the most recommending the most and I don't know it's one of those books that pops up in conversation just you're talking about something and you're oh i read this book where they say that blah 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 and you reference the book so this is the book that i have thought about the most um referenced the most recommended the most and it is a ghost in the throat by doreen griffa which i read for the book to price the only round of the book to price i participated in <laughs> um so yeah definitely that's the best book i have read so far this year it has stuck in my mind in a way that um i knew it was going to be a favorite of the year but as i said just like it, i've had so many conversations where i have referenced this book so yeah the next question is what is the best sequel you have read so far this year and that would definitely have to be the sequels to uh nevermore the the, fir the first book or the trials of morgan crow the first book in the nevermore series um this year i read the second and third book which are wondersmith and Hollowbox, and they were both fantastic mm, they were they could be my answers for the surprise too because i didn't love the first book but the second and third one blew my mind and i just i love them and i can't wait for the fourth one so either of those could be my answer i'm going to go with wondersmith which is the book two i think that one has been my favorite but i also loved book three so those uh, would be the best sequels i've read so far this year the next question is new release you haven't read yet but want to and because I've been in a reading slump and just like a life slump in general, I haven't been paying that much attention, but I'm going to answer with books I had pre-ordered that came out this year that I haven't read yet. So I'm going to go into my Kindle app. One would be a novella, which is All the Horses of Iceland by Sarah Tolmy. And the other one is dead collections a novel by isaac Feldman. so yeah that's that the next question is most anticipated release for the second half of the year and for that i am going to go into my pre-orders list <laughs> because again i haven't been paying attention usually i always read the newsletters and publishers and goodreads and i'm watching new releases videos anticipated releases videos and so i always have anticipated releases um but this year i i haven't been paying attention but i do have some pre-orders that haven't arrived yet um or rather that haven't arrived to my kindle because usually when i pre-order is in a digital copy um but let me just check them okay yeah so they are two 
The first one is A Taste of Gold and Iron by Alexandra Rowland. Super excited about that one. That one is one of those that I think, I think I'm going to read as soon as it gets into my Kindle because I have been looking forward to it since I pre-ordered it months ago. I think I pre-ordered it last year. And uh, yeah, if you read the synopsis and if you see the cover, very much looking forward to that. I just realized and you know, doesn't make sense that I'm saying this to you right now at the middle of the video, but I just realized that I am filming with myself in the middle of the frame. And when you film book videos, you put yourself at the end of the frame so you can add the books next to you. That's how long I haven't filmed bookish videos. I didn't remember that. Going back to my pre-orders, the other one I am very much excited about comes in September 13th. And this one actually was a recommendation from my friend Kara at White Book Garden. She recommended this book to me. Or rather she sent me the link because she knows. Uh, you'll see. You'll see why. You'll see why. So this one is a non-fiction book. And it is called The Contemplative Tarot. A Christian Guide to the Cards by Brittany Mueller. You see why Kara recommended this book to me. Um, she knows that I've been loving uh, tarot lately and she also knows that I'm a Catholic and we have interesting theological discussions and um, so, she, so she sent me, she found out about this book and she sent it to me and she was like, ah, hey, look, and I saw it and I immediately pre-ordered the book and I went stalking the author in social media and then I go, I went, I got into a rabbit hole of Christian tarot internet, which I didn't know existed. Um, and I'm just so excited. I'm just so excited. I can't wait for that to get to my kid. The next question is biggest disappointment and I don't want to answer this question because the biggest disappointment had nothing to do with the thing in itself. It's not a book but it's a bookish thing and it has nothing to do with the thing. It has all to do with me and, and my life this year and I don't want to say anything bad about this thing because I don't want to. So I'm going to skip this question. <laughs> um, the next question would be the biggest surprise. And I could answer the um, two sequels for the Nevermore series because as I said, it surprised me that I love them so much uh, after I didn't love the first one. Um, but to say another thing, I'm going to answer the saga graphic novel. I never know if it's a graphic novel or a comic. But I'm going to go with graphic novel. I read the first four volumes, three volumes, I think, at the beginning of the year. And the reason why I haven't read more is because um, I got them for free through Kindle Unlimited. And I haven't been wanting to, to buy more books. <laughs> so that's why I haven't... Why can't I find my most my my recent reads? Guys, I've been so out of the bookish world. I can't even navigate the st story graph. Um Okay. Oh, never mind. I read the first two books. <laughs> I mean the first two volumes. I don't know why I thought I read four. Um, yeah, that didn't make sense that 4 would be for free in Kindle Unlimited, right? Um, but yeah, so I read the first two volumes and loved them. And the reason why it's a surprise is because I actually had attempted to read the first volume, I think, last year. And I quickly, quickly, quickly um, gave up on it. I think I read like two pages and I thought, oh, no, mm, not for me. It wasn't my thing. Um... <laughs> And so I thought I didn't like it. And this year, I don't know why, I think I was starting to be, to feel the slump coming or something. I don't know. I just wanted something quick and easy. 
and um, the reason why I actually started reading it last year was because I love the cover and the cover is very much something that if I see it I'm like okay if this was a TV show I would be all over it so this, that's why I started it but again I didn't I thought it wasn't my thing but this year I was like okay I'm going to give it another try oh and Ashley from um, Bookish Realm she had been doing a series where she discussed all the volumes of Saga and I know she loves the, the series and so I thought okay I'm going to give it another try and I read book uh, I mean volumes one and two back to back and love them and I actually I, I really do want to keep going because I really love them and I want to know what happens next but again I uh, budget <laughs> it's expensive to read graphic novels especially one like this one that has like 12 or 13 or something like that volume so it's like oh my god i have to buy every single one so that's why i haven't continued um i have a um, the the like the tome that that has all the volumes printed in my wish list maybe when i have a birthday or something i can ask for that one and so i can keep reading um the the book the volumes but yeah so i i think that would be my biggest my biggest surprise the next question is favorite new author and for me uh when i say someone is my favorite author it's not not only that i like their writing which i mean obviously I like their writing and I like their books, but I've seen people say that oh, for it to be a, a for someone to be a favorite author, I need to have read at least two books or at least three books or that type of uh, requirements. For me, when I say a favorite author, what I mean is I'm interested in the author themselves, so the author as a person. So, for instance, Tolkien. Tolkien is one of my favorite authors or my favorite author i don't know why i said one of my favorite he's my favorite author not only because i love the lord of the rings and i you know but because i love him as a person i am oh i'm very interested in him i i after i read the lord of the rings i read his biography i read uh, his book of of letters to his children i have a collection of letters that i want to read you know like i'm interested in his life and in him as a person so whenever i have a new author that i consider oh that's my favorite author that also comes into consideration so by that um standard or by that definition i guess i would say my favorite new author i discovered this year is um laura tempest sakraf and um i read first her book with the liminal and i am currently reading anatomy of of the witch she writes non-fiction um and i just after I read with the liminal, I started stalking her on social media, seeing what else she does, what else she has. She's a graphic designer and a dancer and a writer, and she's just a very interesting person. So, um, and I love her writing and her views. So, I would say she's my new favorite author. As I said, I'm currently reading this book by her, but I have so many of her other books on my wish list and um she has an oracle deck coming soon which if you are <laughs> into tarot or oracle cards you know she um that's one anticipated release that i have that's not a book but it's an oracle deck by her um so you know i i guess i would say her the next question is newest fictional crush and buckle your seat belts because you know this is my question this is my thing i fictional crushes are my jam so yes i could hate on the fictional crush haters but i'm not going to i'm just going to tell you my fictional crushes so um the first one would be hawk snow and he is uh the the alpha of the wolf pack the snow dancer pack in the side changeling series this year i read book 10 of the series which is his book and (laughs) 
he's I mean that series is full of manly man alpha type heroes so if, if you're not into that sort of thing you're probably not going to like that series <laughs> and I can acknowledge when something is not necessarily of the times um but you know I they are good looking they are handsome they are manly they are alpha in the best ways um they, they're animalistic but also super sensitive he has like a soft side and a tragic past and um yes <laughs> i mean I don't know what else to say. The next one is Captain Jupiter North from <laughs> the Nevermore series. I have talked about this crush before and I have acknowledged that this is a middle grade series. And I have also clarified that Captain Jupiter North is an adult in the series. And he is the guardian to Morrigan Crow, who is the main character of the series. And he, I talked, I, I talked about it in in a video where I wrapped this book up. He is funny. He is quirky. He has eccentric outfits. He is um, sarcastic. He's hilarious, but he cares about Morgan so much. He loves her so much, and that whole trope of like the guy with the adoptive children <laughs> is just my jam in romance and i know this is not a romance but have you seen the witcher the series on netflix i know it's from a series of books and uh, video games but i have haven't played the video games and i haven't read the books so i'm referencing the show which is what i've seen so you know in that series there is that, that trope and i was going to say why but i realized that's a spoiler and if someone um, is watching the series. I don't want to spoil it for them. But if you have seen The Witcher season two, you know the trope I am referring to of, of like the adoptive, you know. So Captain Jupiter North is no Gerald of Rivia. I mean, whatsoever. He's he's like quirky. Um, he wears glitter. You know, he's not a girl or Olivia, but I mean that trope where, where you see that paternal side. And I realize I'm rambling, so I'm going to stop there. Hawk Snow and Captain Jupiter North. Um, the next one is um, newest favorite character, and I'm going to go with Jupiter. Just He's a great, great character all around. He makes me laugh. He's one of those characters who... The moment he's on page, I just smile. I don't even care what's going on. He's mentioned, I smile. That's it. The next question is book that made you cry. And this is going to be a super weird answer. But it's going to be Girl Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. And it's not necessarily that, that the book itself made me cry. Like I didn't cry while reading. I mean, I don't cry in books. You know this because I've told you this. Um, but if I cried in books, sometimes I say this. Like if I cried, I would cry with this book. This is not a book you cry to. It's not. But <laughs> Chloe has a chronic illness. And that chronic illness and the impacts it had on her life ha are discussed in the book. And as you know, I also have an illness, a lifelong illness like Chloe. And this year I have been having um, health problems. I have been having emotional baggage things related to my illness and I have been going through stuff I went back to therapy relating my illness I've been reflecting on my life etc <laughs> and so to read Chloe's 
struggle with her illness which again it's a super light-hearted book it's not like a hard hitting exploration of illness or anything but just to read about it hit me and also i body read this book i body read it with l at l things and i love to body read books with her because we have great conversations but the fact that i was body reading it meant that i was analyzing even deeper into the book and i had a full-blown existential crisis after that book i cried after that book i seriously considered stopping the body read <laughs> and telling l i'm so sorry i can't with this existential crisis i didn't in the end i did finish the body read but yeah that would be the book that made me cry the next would be a book that made you happy and i'm sorry to be super repetitive but i'm again going to say the nevermore series i'm noticing a pattern here so i don't read a ton of middle grade books i i a few only but last year the book that i kept mentioning and mentioning and mentioning in my mid-year freak out was amber and clay which was a middle grade book one of the two or three middle grade books that I read last year in total and this year again I think the only middle grade book I've read is the Nevermore series and it, it's a book that has been showing up a lot so you know I don't read a ton but when I do so that would be a book that made me happy as I said just reading about Jupiter makes me smile but not only Jupiter I love all the characters and the dynamic and it's super funny and um, Morgan, Morgan has a best friend who is hilarious and he writes dragons and uh, he, he, she lives in a hotel that's kind of like alive and so the hotel is an entity in itself and it, it, the hotel is very snarky and there's a giant talking cat who is also very snarky and very sarcastic and it makes me smile it's super fun then the most beautiful book you've bought this year and that is super easy question to answer because i haven't bought any book this year and that is because everything that i've bought are tarot decks tarot, tarot or oracle decks i haven't bought any single book and finally what books do you need to read by the end of the year so because i've been in a reading and life slump i am not giving myself a super heavy TBR. I'm going to mention the, the books that I pre-ordered that I mentioned before. So um, at, at least the two that are coming out that I mentioned that I'm excited about, um, the ones that come in out in August and September, those two. Uh, from the books on my shelves, I would love to get two a uh, non-fiction book about dragons that I have that I don't remember the name but you can see it in the screen and I will of course write it down in the description I would love to get two Children of Ash and Elm by Neil Price I would love to get two uh, History of Witchcraft that I also have that I also put here in an image and for fiction I would love to get two um, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell and Dragon Mage, those two. So I guess those are the ones that I'm most excited. I'm like, I hope, I really do hope I read them. I almost forgot the Seal Marillion. That one I do feel like I have to read it because I want to read it before the Lord of the Rings series on Amazon Prime comes out. And I think it comes out in either August or September. So I have to get going with that one, the Seal Marillion. After June, which is Ancient Sathon, <laughs> that I've been reading, uh, maybe in July I will read the Silmarillion. So, we'll see. So yes, that would be it for the Meteor Book Freak Out Tag. I told you I thought I wasn't going to have anything to say, but you know me, I always talk too much, so even when I don't have anything to say, I have a lot to say. So that was the Meteor Book Freak Out Tag. It was fun. I'm glad that this time of the year came around because I was not in the mood to film book videos but this is quick and easy to answer and kind of like um, got me in the mood to film so yeah I will see you soon-ish whenever with another bookish video and in the meantime I wish you happy reading